recording then. Okay. All right. I think it's recording. Yes. Right. Okay. So my first question for you is, um, what was your role in the schools and how frequently did you communicate with like administrators? So, yeah, um, my role in the school as a school resource officer. Uh, yeah. So we, we have a, it's like a little, like a pyramid type of uh, system as an SRO. So at the top would be school safety. And so, uh, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, there's no weapons in the school, um, you know, there's access control points, cameras, bushes are cut low so you can visibility, you can see um, access control, meaning, um, you know, how the, um, you know, the cars and are going to the school or something's coughing or something. You okay? Okay. You're good. You're just playing. Um, and like how large a backpacks kids are carrying all that type of stuff, all like school safety, you know, like trying to stop, you know, shootings and things like that. Um, and then, after, and then, you know, obviously making arrests and things like that. And then below that would be education. And so um, I would do several um, spe uh, speaking engagements in different classrooms uh, for just more like criminal justice type of awareness. So um, especially my driver, my kids that were driver age, like 16 and up. So about... Um, vehicle registration, the laws, things like that. Um, and then all the way down to uh, the elementary level where the youngest I did um, a presentation over um, scary uh, strangers. <clears throat> uh, and so like, you know, who to trust, who not to talk to, when to call the police, um, to obviously like the sixth graders at your school and life yeah. skills, things like that. So it's it's uh safety first number one and then education and then um at the bottom which i i tend to incorporate it all is just the relationships you make because i think they kind of all go together uh but you know it's one of those things where you can sit there and if you don't prioritize safety and you're just like talking to kids and shooting the stuff and you know you can put somebody at harm you know because that's your number one job so you kind of have to incorporate it all but I think making the relationships is important because the kids get to be familiar with you and they get to be comfortable enough to tell you about stuff. Uh, So-and-so is bringing a gun tomorrow because they're scared they're going to get jumped. Oh, okay. But that kid would never tell you that if you didn't make those relationships with them. Yeah. Uh, you know, things like this. So that's kind of how it goes. As far as administrators, that was something that I wasn't, uh, aware of how close our relationship had to be because especially at West Campus there's four principals so there's there's 10th grade 11th grade 12th grade and then the main principal mm -hmm. and so you you have to communicate with all of them because they have about 500 kids each um, and so our roles that we have are radios um, we go to everything from low level like sometimes I, I mean IEP meetings to re-entry meetings when a kid gets suspended uh, for fighting or drugs and they have to come back into the school. We go over like a plan to make sure that everything goes according uh, to plan. Whenever I do make an arrest or whenever, basically whenever I have any kind of law enforcement action, I, I tend to always incorporate the administrator at that level. One, it's, transparency so that way we can all figure it out but two like I respect them like it's their building I'm kind of just there to assist even though I have my job to do so for example if a kid has drugs on them mm -hmm. um, I'll typically call the principal we'll make a plan we'll approach the kid in the classroom have them come out uh, bring them to the principal's office not even my office uh, and then the principal can do their thing because they can do more like searches and things like that without reading Miranda and things like that. Uh, but for the most part, I would do my job first, get that out the way, whether I'm taking them to jail or whatever. And then the principal would do the admin part, like suspensions and things like that. That kind of goes into my next question, because are there any like laws or rules or regulations where 
like you have to respond differently to them than like the principles like you said yeah. kind of with like searches um they don't have to read the rights but are they able to like search a kid's locker and backpack yes so yeah i, I wish i had the uh legislation right in front of me because it, it's like a last name versus whatever state but it was ruled constitutional that um all lockers and their vehicles on the lot can be searched by administrators. Like they, that's, they have no right to privacy. Uh, that's also why the school isn't liable for um, like a cell phone being stolen or something like that. You got to put a lock on it. Um, so if the kid, so one example we had, a kid had drugs on him. And so he knew administrator was gonna search. So he moved his car across the street. Once he moved his car across the street, he knew the principal couldn't go in it, and uh, I couldn't go in it without a warrant, and so he was good. So the one kid that we did get with uh, drugs that was selling drugs on school property, he parked on property. And so once he did that, um, the principal called the K-9, and K-9 hit on the car, um, and then we ended up finding drugs. So the principal can authorize uh, the police to come, but they don't need the police. They can ask... But they can only they can only ask. So if one example is if uh, we had a kid that had a jewel on them and the, mm -hmm. and the principal's like, hey, empty your pockets. And the kid says no. Well, the principal just suspends them for three days or maybe he doesn't even allow them back or whatever the case. It has he'll have a consequence from the school. What about like technology? Like, are you is the principal able to search a cell phone or something for. Like, what are uh, the rights with technology? Well, same thing is is it's all about consent. If that if the kid and the parents give consent, then yeah, um, and then they can go through it. It's got to be like an emergency, like so. Say, uh, like maybe like a school shooting type of thing, and it's it's going on right now. Um, if it's not an emergency, then they ask for consent. Harrison, stop, please. And if the kid gives it to them or the parent gives it to them, then they can search. They can go okay. through. Uh, typically they they get it anyway like so for that big one is uh uh like our a lot of our sex cases with the photos and videos because mm -hmm. uh, they the somebody will tell them hey or like a threat like someone's threatening me over instagram and then they'll pull the kid into the office the principal and they'll say hey let me see your phone and then they'll show them the phone so that's asking for consent the biggest thing with the principals though is they don't need to read miranda rights and um yeah that's pretty much it and then and you're supposed to the kid is supposed to uh it's in your student handbook like the principal asks hey empty your pockets let me search your backpack they're supposed to do that now if they don't do that like i said they just get suspended mm -hmm. but i can't say uh you have to do this you have to do this unless uh, i have probable cause so are there very many situations where like principals are only allowed a limited set of like information or knowledge about like something that's legally going on with a child. Where they aren't allowed. Yeah. Where they're only given like limited knowledge. Or are they for the most part granted full like resources. As long as, as, long as it has to do with the school. So one example is I had and I'll leave names out. But I had a case where a girl um said that she was um um that she was raped in a band room at school at one of the schools and so it happened at the school right and it happened mm -hmm. during school hours it was what was before school because they had access to the room because uh, that's where they're supposed to get their instruments and everything and leave so the music teacher leaves it unlocked and so um so yeah the 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 principal had to was in on knowing about the details of it because the the victim wanted one she wanted her to be there because she trusted her uh, she didn't know me and then um, it happened at the school so like she knew all that like the details she was watched the security footage of them going in there uh, there wasn't camera in there so I mean I imagine if it was 
went in there, she didn't need to watch that part. But anything that involved the school, because she was a part of it, the principal, you know, that's her school. Now, if the student came to me and said, I got raped at home, well, there's nothing to have the principal involved. Um, We would just handle it. The police would handle it out of school. So pretty much anything that happens at school, on school grounds, um, the principal's involved. Gotcha. Um, did you witness very much like unintentional biases? Unintentional? Yeah. I mean, intentional, I guess, too. Um, I would say, yeah. What happens is, I don't know if this is more of a bias or a pattern. So what would happen is that I would see is uh, the same amount of kids, and this kind of goes for, I feel like, society in whole. I mean, whatever you want to put a number seven to 10% cause the crimes and do, you know, or commit crimes and do these things. And 90% of people are just good people. Well, when you have a body like that at school, let's say there's 1500 kids at West campus. Um, you know, there's only probably a hundred that are constantly bringing the drugs, doing this, you know, committing crimes. But then what happens is those kids hang out with other kids. It's almost like there's sub sales of, the, of it. And the other kids aren't necessarily doing the things, but they're associated with them. So one kind of bias I would see, and it's hard, and I would be guilty of it too, is um, say kid A is the one that's always getting arrested. It's just, we tend to look at his um, group of friends as part of the problem too, but not necessarily. So, um, and then I would see more attention being brought to them, you know, like, hey, watch those kids. You know, uh, let's look at the security footage of those kids leaving or those kids doing this versus, um, you know, say like the kid that never gets in trouble and they're like jocks or whatever. Nobody really watches them. But then you find out later they've been smoking in a locker room, <laughs> but you didn't, you know, so that's kind of like you kind of get wrapped into those kids. Yeah. Uh, instead of watching everybody but also it's a tough job because you have to you have so many students so this is kind of my last and final in your opinion what would make an effective principal or like what advice would you give like a future educational leader (sighs) to make a good principal um i would say okay from what i from what i see the ones that are really, really not just likable, but res- respected by peers and the students and even like non-members, just people that kind of go in the building to have business there. Uh, one is visibility. And that's hard because you, you're you constantly in and out of the office. You People are calling you. Parents are calling you. But visibility, one of the biggest complaints I would hear uh, from students was I, I don't I've never seen this prince I never see them I never talk to them I don't even know they never I don't know who they are and then one of the bigger compliments I would hear about a principal was man they're always in the hallway they're always like talking to me they're always engaging with me I see them um, and so and I know that's difficult to do it's a balance I mean I would see one principal he would have his phone out and he would just be, you know, almost running to the wall, emailing back where he know he could email in the office, but it was just better to be visible. And so at the high school level, of course, that's during break times, like when the bell rings to engage in students, let them see you. Um, and then communications big. Um, I think how you deal with things in tough times, we had a suicide uh, happen at the school and just people the students and the teacher the whole body's looking towards you as to be a leader and how you handle those tough times uh, being compassionate you know allowing the students to grieve um, and just how you handle it yourself is very important I think that's always remembered people don't forget that um, and then another probably the last thing is letting them as far as a principal I'm, I'm more focused on the kids. I mean, I know I kind of get some yeah. vibe from the teachers, but for, as far as what the kids say, that treating everyone equal, uh, treating everyone fair and equal, you know, um, mm-hmm. and just letting that 
kind of that goes back to that biasy thing. Like one complaint I would get from the kids is, you know, it seems like the principal, they like all like the jock kids or the rich kids. And, you know, they don't really, and it's like the kids that aren't even in trouble, but they're kind of like the emo kids, you know, or they kind of have the different color hair and, you know, they're kind of alternative, yeah. but it's, it doesn't, you know, feel like they don't feel like they get as much attention or, you know, things like that. So, hmm. so cool. fair and equal. Yeah. Well, thanks for, um, let me ask you some questions. Yeah, no problem. Is there anything else you want to add? Are we, i we good to go? We're good. Yeah. I'm good to go. Um, thanks. So yeah, if you got what you need.